In this video, we will discuss file descriptors and the file descriptor table. So first of all, what is a file descriptor? This is a number which is used to describe an open file or an input output resource in the system. And this is a unique non-negative integer. So any file that has been opened or any input output resource that is being used by the system is referred to by this file descriptor which is a non-negative unique number. And this number describes the resource and how it can be accessed. So whenever a process requests for any resource, whether it could be a file or an input output device, then the kernel will grant access to that process, assuming that that request is valid. And then the kernel will create an entry for that particular resource in the global file table. So the operating system, it maintains a global file table and any file that has been opened or any input output resource that is being accessed, it has an entry in this global file table. And then the kernel provides the process with location of that entry through the file descriptor. Now each process has a file descriptor table. So as we saw the operating system is having a global file table but each process is having a file descriptor table which is particular to that process only. So the process it cannot access this file descriptor table because this table is hidden from the process. So anytime the process wants to access it, it is through the operating system only. Now in this table, there are these numbers over here and each number is referring to a file descriptor. 0, 1 and 2 are the special file descriptors. So 0, it always points to the standard input and usually it is the keyboard. File descriptor 1 will always point to the standard output and most of the times it is the terminal screen. And file descriptor 2, it always points to the standard error. That means if there is any error in the system, where do we want to send the error status to? And many of times if we want to display the error on the standard output terminal screen, then this will also point to the standard output. So suppose if we have a statement like this, read 0 above 50. That means we are giving a system call, the process is giving a system call and here it is referring to the zero file descriptor that means the standard input. So the process wants to read from the standard input which could be the, uh, the keyboard and whatever is being read where it is to be put and how many bytes are being read. Similarly, there can be a system call by the process which is a write and it can say write to 1. 1 is the standard output that means the process wants to write onto the terminal screen and this is the string it wants to display. So this is a character array and the size of the byte of size of the string which is to be displayed. So anytime the process wants to read or write from input output device, it will use system calls. Because it cannot access the file descriptor table, it is using these file descriptors to access them. So the process will give a call to the operating system in case it wants to read. The operating system will now access the file descriptor table and output whatever is to be given like hello world, it will send to the standard output. So the process can manipulate files through open and close system calls. Whenever the process calls open, the operating system will look 
for the first available key in the file descriptor table. So the process has sent in a request to open uh, some particular file. So the operating system will check the file descriptor table and whichever file descriptor is available. So suppose since 0 is pointing to standard input, 1 is pointing to standard output, 2 is also pointing to standard error. Suppose 3 is pointing to a file, some file bar. Now 4 was av available. Suppose 4 was available, then 4 will be assigned as the key file descriptor to open this particular file that, that the process has requested. So the operating system looks for the first available key and assigns it as the file descriptor. So if the process gives a command like this open foo where foo is the file, the file descriptor that will be assigned to this foo file will be the first value which is available in the file descriptor table. Now 4 will be assigned to foo and this 4 will be returned to the process. This 4 will be assigned to the uh, to the file and the process will make any access to the file through this file descriptor only. So we have seen that there is a file descriptor table per process and there is a global file table which is maintained by this OS and this is system wide. So this global file table will keep record of all the files and all the resources that are currently being used in the system by all the processes. This file descriptor table, it will be maintained for each particular process. Now this global file table, this will contain information about the file like the mode. That means what is the mode in which the file has been opened? Is it read, write, append, etc. It will also keep information of the inode of the file. We will just discuss inode. It will keep information about the byte offset. That means where is the current pointer or the offset of the file where it is being written or read from and the access rest restrictions, whether the file is only a read only file or a write only file or it has both permissions. The inode table, this is the table which is actually describing the underlying files and we will discuss more about inodes when we start discussing the file system. So this is actually referring to the actual files and where these files are available. Right now the file descriptor tables, the global file tables, they are all having pointers to the location of these particular files. Now multiple file descriptors can refer to the same global file table entry like over here this standard output or the standard error they are referring to the same entry in the global file table. Similarly multiple global file table entries can refer to the same inode because a particular file may be opened by different processes. So, Global in the global file table, multiple entries might refer to the same inode. We will discuss about inodes more in detail in later lectures.